So now we're going to get into validating and truing our data. So one thing we like to do as long range shooters is take that ballistic software, that drop data that it's giving us, and actually shoot it out to distance and see if it's actually correct. So the way we want to do this is transcribe that information on a sheet of paper is the way I like to do it. That way I can track errors as I'm going out to distance. Ideally, if we can, we'd like to do 200, 300, 400, all the way out to 1,000 if we have the resources. Today, I'm gonna to shoot four, five, and 600 yards just to see if my data is tracking up and record any discrepancies. So I have what we call predicted data in one column here. I wrote that down what the ballistic software originally told me where I need to be for my elevation. As I'm shooting out to distance, I'm gonna go ahead and record where I end up. So if there is a discrepancy on target, if I'm a little bit low, a little bit high, I need to make a correction and then I can record that validated after I'm hitting center. So I'm really just concerned about the elevation portion throughout this process. Windage, I'm not too concerned about. I wanna hit the target, but if I get a left and right discrepancy, I'll chalk that up to wind. I'm not too concerned about that. Before I start to record my data on the paper, a couple of things I wanna do with my software is one, update the environment. So update the temperature, the pressure, the humidity, and then also just update your direction of fire. So I've already done that, updated my direction of fire. I also took all the wind speed off. I like to get rid of any wind speed that might exist on there, just so I'm getting the actual drop data without any secondary influences in there either. So I did that, I recorded the information on the sheet of paper, and I'm gonna go ahead and go through the process of shooting those three targets. Center. Center. So elevation looked good at 400. I'm gonna go ahead and write down my data. It was 1.6 mils up, 1.6 mils. So no change there. I used my predicted data and I validated it. I'm hitting at 1.6 mils at 400 yards. Now I'm gonna go ahead and walk out to 500. My elevation for that is 2.3 and do the same thing. Center. Center. So 500, I'm still tracking pretty good on elevation, 2.3 mils. I was hitting center, 2.3 mils. I'll go ahead and write that down. We wanna make sure we're recording everything. We don't wanna just keep transitioning yard lines and forget about a discrepancy or forget to record where we're at. So we'll walk out to 600. That'll be the last one I do here. I'm at 3.2 mils. Center. Center. Okay, so on that particular yard line, uh, I called center. So remember when we call our shots, we're calling from where we saw the reticle last. So I held center every time. That's what we wanna do, we wanna hold center. But my impacts were a little bit high at that distance. So at this particular distance, at 600, what I would wanna do is just come down a 10th of a mil, and then I would go ahead and re-engage that target. I should be down towards center, should be hitting point of aim, point of impact and then that's gonna be my validated data around 3.1 mils. So this is the process of collecting data. We wanna do this if we can to validate this ballistic software. You know, it's only as good as the variables that we put in there, the information that we fed that. And if there's a discrepancy there, we wanna fix it and true this data up. This is called data on previous engagements. We refer to it as DOPE. So this is our dope. We want good data on previous engagements. So we can take this and use this for hunting or whatever our application might be. 
More importantly, we can actually true up this ballistic software to match what reality is for us. So if you do have a discrepancy, the first thing I would do is put a laser range finder on that target and verify that it is actually at 600 yards. A lot of times we might be at a flat range or a range maybe we've never been to before. They tell us it's at 600, maybe it's at 580, maybe it's at 610 or 620. Maybe there's an error there that we don't know about. So go ahead and throw, throw a laser range finder on it. See if that target is in fact at 600 or maybe there's an error with the distance and not with your actual elevation. If that target is in fact at 600 yards and everything is looking pretty good, we should also start to kind of pick apart other areas as well. One main area is obviously us as the shooter. I've seen this problem quite often with shooters is if their bipods are too low and we're kind of crowding the gun or their comb height is too high, there's a little bit of downward pressure that's created while we're on the gun. So when we go to fire, we get higher shots impacting on elevation. So that can be remedied by bringing up those bipods a little bit higher, and then you get a more squared off connection to the rifle, and it allows everything to operate a little bit smoother, and there's no deviation or upward deviation due to us kind of pushing down on the rear of the gun here. So think about us as a shooter, like are we doing something to influence that shot in one direction or the other. Uh, there's other areas as well. We need to think about our equipment capability. So is your rifle actually uh, able to hold the precision that you're asking it to? Or maybe it's not designed for what we're trying to do here. Also the ammunition, is it good quality ammunition where we're gonna see good consistency? Or is there gonna be some variation due to the inconsistency? Maybe it's not a high quality ammunition. So we need to kind of pick apart the whole process and variables. Then we can turn to the ballistic software and start to address were my inputs correct. A common area for people to kind of mess up here is when they're putting the G1 ballistic coefficient in their ballistic software or G7 ballistic coefficient, they mismatch the numbers. So in my case, I use the G7. So what I mean by this is I would use my G7 number but I actually am under the G1 drag model. So it's a very common mistake. Just make sure your drag model matches with your BC number uh, and all the other inputs are lining up correctly as well. Just go ahead and double check all of that information in the ballistic software. And then if nothing is incorrect there, we feel pretty good about our whole process and everything else that we have here. Then we can go ahead and start to true up that trajectory if we want to. Now we need to be strategic in where you true your trajectory at. So I'm trying to true the ballistic software to match reality out here. I don't necessarily wanna do this at the extreme far distances because your bullet's gonna be dropping more and more significantly. A common area for people to true up their rifles is about five to 700 yards, maybe 800 yards. If we're picking up discrepancies in those areas, we wanna go ahead and go through our gun profile and then we can actually fine tune the muzzle velocity of our rifle and true up the trajectory. So we type in the truing range. In my case, if I wanted to true at 600, I would type in 600 and then I'd go down and type in my actual elevation that I ended at, which would be 3.1. And that will give me an assumed muzzle velocity that I should be at. I can choose to apply this and it will correct the rest of my trajectory. If I don't apply it, then I will just have to live with the discrepancy or continue to shoot at the target to see if maybe it was me, maybe there was a different variable off. So this is an option. Just be aware when we correct our muzzle velocity, all the other information is gonna be affected to some degree. It may throw it off, it may not. So we wanna be sure that we're going back and double checking that information to make sure it all lines up with what we're seeing out here.